Jesus. And we're going to the 12th chapter. Now, to some of you, this may be a very familiar text because it's something that we celebrate. And if we were a part of the Jewish faith, every year they actually celebrate the Passover. Yeah. So if you're with me, we're at Exodus chapter 12, and we're reading verses 1 through 13. And the Bible reads, Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, on the tenth of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb. I heard my sister mention the lamb earlier. According to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of persons. According to each man's need, you shall make your count for the lamb. Mm -hmm. Your lamb shall be without blemish a male of the first year. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. Now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight, and they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat it. Then they shall eat the flesh on that night roasted in fire with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat it raw, no boils at all with water, but roasted in fire. Its head with its legs and its entrails. You shall let none of it remain until morning. And what remains of it until morning you shall burn with fire. And thus you shall eat it with a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. So ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Last two. For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night, and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Take your seats. We've already received a prayer over the word, so I'm not going to pray. I'm just going to get to the text. Now, when I asked God after I received Pastor Curry's call, Lord, what do you want me to say? He said, I only want to remind my people of two things. So if I had to live for a subject today, mm -hmm. it would be the blood still covers. Yeah. The blood Amen. still works. Yeah. And I'm covered. Yes. Amen. 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 So in this particular story, we're learning about the Passover. Now, the Bible says that God gave instruction to Aaron and Moses, and he told them what to teach the other people on what to do. But one thing that I noticed here is that he said, when I see the blood, I will pass. Now, that's a hymn too, y'all. I love that. It's one of my favorites. I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Now, I can say for myself that we live in a time and a society where all types of things are going on. Yes. People are wreaking all types of havoc in the land. Yes. There are so many people, as Pastor Curry was all in the text, that are losing their homes, losing their jobs, losing their minds, losing their bodies to sickness. Yes. But the Bible says when he sees the blood, yes, he'll pass over Amen. you. So what I come to share with you today is nothing other than what's in the word of God. Mm -hmm. Pastor Curry will tell you I am a Bible teacher and preacher. So I did not come to give you Latrice's lyrics. 
I come to give you the word of God. Amen. Amen. So Romans chapter 5 said, 5 to 9 says, much more than having now been justified by his blood, yeah. we shall be saved from wrath through him. Yeah. So I'm like, God, okay, we have a lot of work that tells us and teaches us that you are saving us by the blood, yeah. that you are covering us by the blood, yeah. that the wrath should not come to us because of the blood. So why is it, God, that so many of us are believing and living lives where we're not covered? Why is, are we as believers living like we're not covered? <laughs> when the Bible tells us plain as day, because of the blood, we're covered. Okay, I'll tell you why. Because there's so many of us as believers who do not trust God enough to believe his word. Mm -hmm. Come on. And that's a sad thing. Because the Bible says in Luke 9, 23, then he said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself. That means let you deny your own mindset. Let you deny your own imaginations. Let you deny your own plans and follow him. And it says he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. There's so many of us living as believers. We don't want to take up a cross. We don't want to suffer. I heard Pastor Curry again all in the word today. We don't want to suffer. How can you reign with him unless you suffer with him? Mm -hmm. So this text tells me, okay, God, I know I'm covered. However, there's a criteria to remaining covered. All right. Yeah. Okay. It says that if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. So not only do we have to deny ourselves, not only do we have to take up the cross daily, not on Sunday and Wednesday, Amen. but daily, but then it says we have to follow him. The Bible says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Right. So why is it that we're going our own way when God says walk straight? Mm -hmm. Three things. So I said, God, all right. I hear you. We're covered. I know the criteria, what you want us to do. But he said, you know what, Latrice? I just want you to remind my people of what the blood does for them. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 53 5 says but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed so tell me why are we walking around sick tell me why are we going around letting people get on our nerves to the point where we have no peace tell me why are we getting caught up in sin when the bible says Again, Isaiah 53, 5. But he was wounded by our transgressions. That means that every sin was covered. Mm -hmm. He was bruised yes. for our iniquities. Yes. And the chastisement for our peace yes. was upon him. So I said, God, you know what? I recently, too, almost lost my mind. Mm. Because those of you who know me or who don't know the story, I've gone through a whole lot within the last 12 months. Mm -hmm. The last time I was here, I had a husband. Now I don't. Wow. Because God said, you know what, girl? You're covered. And there is nothing, 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 nothing. I'm telling you my testimony now. That will separate me from the love of God. All right. No man, no woman, no boy, no girl, no job, no car, no house, no crib. Nothing. Yes, because I've learned this. And he said, Latrice, now that you've learned it, I want you to share it with my people. Yeah. All of this, I'm covered. So I said, all right, Lord, where do you want me to go next? He said, tell them about Psalm 103. Psalm 103 says this, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. How many of y'all have jobs with benefits? what God gives us. He gave us a job. He said, go out into the hedges and highways and compel men to come. Right. We are all ambassadors for Christ. We're all forerunners for Christ. We all were yet sinners, but now the power has put us back together again yeah. so that we can go out and claim 
Who forgives all your iniquities? Remember, we just read that in Isaiah, that he was bruised for those. Yes. So verse 3 in Psalm 103 says, who forgives all your iniquities? Uh -huh. yes. Who heals all your diseases? Yes. I know that sometimes God sends a test like cancer. He sends a test like HIV and AIDS. But the Bible says, who heals not some, oh. not most, oh. not a few, all but all your diseases. Yes. The benefits. Yes, who redeem your life from destruction. There's that wrath again. Y'all know what I'm talking about yes. now. That same wrath that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The Bible says that when Jesus was talking to one of his disciples, he says that Satan, the devil, desires to sift you as wheat. Yes. But I pray for you yes, that your faith should remain strong. Yes, he didn't say, I pray that you wouldn't fall. He didn't say, I pray that you wouldn't mess up. He said, I pray that your faith not fail. Come on, yeah. Because if you're living and walking by faith, that means that you're believing God for the impossible. Yes, Who redeemed your life from destruction? Who crowns you with loving kindness yes. and tender mercies. Great is your faithfulness, God. Yes. Who satisfies your mouth with good things. These are all the benefits. The benefits. Yes. So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. I'm telling you all, I went to a church last Sunday and the lady did not really know me at all. And she said, Latrice, it's time for you to stop dealing with chicken. Jesus. When God has called you to be an eagle. So I just come to share that with you all this morning because the Bible says right here, so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Now there's so many of us who are down on the ground pecking like chickens when God called us to soar out like eagles. Now we know that eagles have a very sharp eye. That means that our discernment will be in place the next time a broke joker come up and act like he your husband. You can speak to that man and say, the devil is a liar, I'm an eagle. Y'all sit down.